Identifying patterns will earn you big points on the ACT science test. The key to answering these questions correctly is to follow the trend. You can earn 11 points on pattern questions. That's almost a third of the total points available. These questions ask you to identify general trends in data. They're very similar to figure interpretation questions. Pattern questions ask you to predict what will happen for data points beyond a graph or table, to define the shape of a curve, or to describe a relationship between two variables. Regardless of the data depicted, they always ask you to continue the trend presented in the data and to find values for points that aren't shown. To do this, assume that trends in a table or graph will continue beyond the data contained on it. So if a line is straight and going up on a graph, then it continues that way. It won't suddenly dip and go downward. To answer these questions, Keep in mind the same questions you normally ask yourself about any table or figure. What does the figure show? What are the units of measurement? Where is the information I need? Is there a pattern in the information? Pattern questions are similar to inference questions. The information isn't explicitly stated, but can be determined based on trends in the graphs or tables. Here's a science passage with figures that are likely sources of pattern questions. Most natural substances can occur in any of three phases, states of matter, solid, liquid, or gas. The molecular, ionic, and atomic structures of a substance determine the conditions under which it will experience a phase change. A phase diagram indicates the phases of a substance under different conditions of temperature and pressure. The conditions of a transition occur between adjacent phases, with two or more phases coexisting, and are represented by solid lines. Figure 1 below shows the phase diagram for water, and Figure 2, the phase diagram for carbon dioxide. I hope you're identifying and marking the purpose, method, and results of this passage as we read. And don't worry if you couldn't separate them. This passage doesn't break up the scientific method neatly. Now look at the figures. You just read that Figure 1 is the phase diagram for water, and Figure 2 the phase diagram for carbon dioxide so you only need to worry about understanding the units. As you see, both figures have the same units. The x-axis is measured in degrees Celsius, and the y-axis in millimeters of mercury. Do you see a difference between the two graphs? Of course. The range of both temperature and pressure is different on figure 1 than it is on figure 2. OK, now you're ready to try some questions. Based on figure 1, how does water transition from solid to liquid at a pressure greater than 5 millimeters of mercury? First, look at figure 1. The boundary between solid and liquid water is a straight line that goes up from 0 degrees Celsius on the x-axis. As long as the pressure is greater than 5 millimeters of mercury, the transition of water from solid to liquid only depends on temperature. The next question asks, according to figure 1, Liquid transitions to gas when, once again, look at figure 1. Notice the boundary line between liquid and gas is on an incline. That means that the relationship is more involved than that for the transition from solid to liquid. It will depend on both temperature and pressure. Look at both. Note that the transition occurs as the temperature increases past 10 degrees Celsius and at pressures greater than 5 millimeters of mercury. And finally, based on figure 2, carbon dioxide exists in liquid phase between what two temperatures? Look at figure 2. Carbon dioxide is a liquid between negative 50 and 50 degrees Celsius. But remember, science is precise. So in finding support for your answer, you'd also want to be aware that carbon dioxide is a liquid at those temperatures at pressures greater than 5,000 millimeters of mercury and less than 50,000 millimeters of mercury. Now you're ready to move on to some guided practice questions. Remember, look to the data and always follow trends.